Hey, this is Joe from Personas, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to fix the volume problems in your podcast. Quick story, I was mowing the grass the other day, and I had my noise-canceling headphones on and was listening to a World War II podcast. I sound like such an old fart. Anyway, love the podcast, very informative, but this particular podcaster uh, recently started adding commercials to his podcast, so ads that people would send him. Problem was, his podcast vocal was at one level, and I had to crank my headphones all the way up to hear him clearly over the sound of the mower and the weed whacker. But then when the commercial would come in, it would be way louder and would kind of hurt, and it made for an unpleasant experience. This is completely avoidable, and I'm going to show you how. But first, let me just create the problem, and then I'll show you the solution. Thanks for listening to the All Things Schnitzel podcast. Up next, an interview with my friend Gregor. But first, a word from our sponsors. Okay, to simulate the podcast commercial, this green track is a fully mastered piece of audio from one of my albums. Listen to the difference in volume when we play this back. Thanks for listening to the All Things Schnitzel podcast. Up next, an interview with my friend Gregor. But first, a word from our sponsors. So whether you have commercials in your podcast or just you've got some sort of theme music that plays in and out, I've heard many podcasts where the music is nice and loud and everything else is quiet. So you may think, well, the solution is to just turn up the preamp gain on my microphone, right? Well, no, as you can see, I mean, look at the level here on my vocal. It's, it's at a decent level. If anything, this might be a little bit louder than I'm normally comfortable with. I just tend to speak at a consistent volume so I don't risk clipping. I mean, even here at my loudest points, I'm getting up here close to like negative six. So I'm not clipping. There's nowhere else to go. If I turn up the microphone input into this software, I'm gonna clip and that's not what I want. So what's our solution? Well, I guess one solution would be to bring the music down, but then that just makes everything quiet, which means when Joe is mowing the yard and trying to listen, he can't get enough volume out of it. The answer is something called a limiter. Let me show you. This is Studio One, the recording software that I use, but most software that you use should have something called a limiter in it. So grab the limiter, put it on your vocal track, okay? Bring the ceiling down. There should be a ceiling control. Set it to something like negative one, and then bring your volume up. Let's start with six decibels. So, and let's just see what happens. With this volume turned up six decibels, let's see how the transition sounds. With my friend Gregor, but first a word from our sponsors. That's pretty good, it's more of an even volume. We could even probably push it a little bit more. The more we push this, you'll start to see that there's some reduction happening, meaning we're turning up the volume of the vocal and the limiter is turning it down when it gets over a certain point. With my friend Gregor, but first a word from our sponsors. And then to make things even better, we could add some sort of a fade in here so they don't cover each other up. But now we've got a pretty even volume from the vocal to the mastered, finished, commercial, or music, whatever you've got there. But first, a word from our sponsors. Okay, hopefully you can hear the difference. I know it may be kind of subtle, but listen to this. Here it is without the limiter. But first, a word from our sponsors. Right, and here it is with the limiter. But first, a word from our sponsors. The cool thing about limiters is they're made to just clamp down on those peaks, those loud parts. They're made to allow you to increase the volume and they don't really change the sound too much as long as you don't go too far. If we look at this, I'm gonna turn the audio off so you can just see it. We can see this little light that goes down here, this little light right here, that's the only time the limiter is actually changing the audio is when that little light is blipping. So for the most part, the vocal's being untouched. It's just being turned up. Um, but now it's at the same or close to the same volume as whatever other material you have. So if you have professional big companies sending you ad spots to put in your podcast, or if you're using finished released music for your background music for your podcast, your vocal will not be loud enough no matter what you do unless you put a limiter on it. Now, a lot of folks might tell you to put uh, compressors and DSers and all these other processors on there. I've done over 200 episodes of podcasts in my career and thousands of videos, which use a microphone and voiceover. I can tell you I use two things on my voice and that's it. A little EQ and a limiter and that's it. So let me just show you the EQ real quick. You're probably already doing this, but the limiter was the missing piece for volume reasons. But for something like this, I would throw an EQ on here. I would listen really quickly. 
Things Schnitzel podcast. Up next, and let's get rid, rid of a little bit of that nasally sound. I have kind of a nasal voice. Let's pull that down. All Things Schnitzel podcast. Up next, an interview with my friend Gregor. But first, a word from our sponsors. And that's it. Like, I might do a little bit of a roll off the low end. Maybe a little cut in the low mids if it's a little boomy there, but otherwise, this is my process for my vocal. What you're hearing right now is this microphone through a preamp, through an EQ with a slight bit of EQ on it into a limiter. That's what you're hearing with every video I've done for the last many, many, many years. That's what I've done for my podcast. This is what you need to do now on your next podcast episode, and things will sound so much more professional, which means you'll probably attract more um, subscribers because they won't be having to throw their headphones off because the volume differences are so great. Um, and secondly, advertisers might be more likely to to advertise with you if their ads don't sound weird next to your spoken word. All right, thanks so much for watching. I know this is a little different from the normal stuff we do here on this channel, but hopefully if you're into podcasting or voiceover or things like this, this has been helpful for you. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.